So this is going to go over explaining what a nutrient solution is and things to look for when you're creating one. Now I put the picture here because this is not a nutrient solution. This is just regular bag fertilizer. Now this might be able to be mixed and made into a nutrient solution, but keep in mind this in its kind of raw solid form is not considered a solution. We need to in some way have a solution be aqueous or dissolved in water. So since we're looking at uh, water, we need to start with target. So what water are we going to use? So typically what you want to start with is some basic testing. pH and EC are two easy tests you can complete. Your targets are starting with water in that 6 to 6.5 uh, pH range and EC under 150 parts per million. The reason why you want a low EC, and this is why RO or reverse osmosis water is so uh, revered in for, for many growers in the sense that the lower the EC is when you're adding that allows you to add more fertilizer and not have kind of waste or background uh, parts per million kind of clogging up the availability of sites in that water that you're using to irrigate. So pH is important as, as you remember that pH is determines the availability of nutrients in your plants. If the pH drifts this will negatively impact your plants and we see that slightly acidic range typically being where we want, want to keep our pH simply because most of the nutrients are at the greatest availability in this pH range. You'll notice, for example, calcium, we get much more acidic and we kind of lose that. And um, we start getting into the basic range. We see can kind of iron will really drop out and so will manganese. That's why we want to shoot for that slightly acidic pH. We want to monitor these, so measure the salts or nutrients in the solution. We want to start with a low ppm because that provides you with more control over what salts, remember nutrients are salts that are present in that solution. Having a, a continual running meter is important to help ensure you maintain levels at the acceptable range. Typically you're looking for around 300 to 700 parts per million in EC of about uh, half to 1.3. You can see the uh, blue lab guardian monitor here, not only measuring our parts per million, but our temperature and also our pH. So this gives a quite nice quick look to see where you are. And this is slightly on the high side. Um, I just kind of added it here. Um, so I was kind of waiting for it to balance out. Maybe just over added just a little bit. Uh, but temperature looks real good and pH is right in that um, general slightly acidic range. In that nutrient solution, remember that pH may be acidic or basic depending on what the main nutrient is. And that could be depending also on what you're feeding. So monitoring the pH is important with the ideal target for cannabis being again around that six and a half uh, range is good to shoot for. Uh, so depending on what nutrient you might be feeding, how you're making that nutrient solution, it can affect whether it might be favoring more the acidic range or more the basic range. So in hydroponics uh, settings, there are minimal buffering factors which can lead to drastic swings in pH and can stress plants. That's why I stress the idea of having continual monitoring, because without a buffer factor, that pH can make large swings uh, when you're adding or mixing nutrients or as roots develop. Uh, there can be a lack of buffer in that water, depending on the solution you're using. So just keep extra attention on that if you're growing hydroponically. Growing in media, whether it be soilless media or soil here, uh, these situations, there's more buffer factors. And this can help stabilize the pH and reduce large swings from occurring even in heavy feeding programs. So that's one of the benefits of growing in media. It does allow some of that buffer factor to occur. If you're growing, for example, in like a rock wool, while there's a media that really offers no buffering factor. So keep that in mind uh, as far as what media you're growing in. If it's soilless or um, soil here, there's a greater buffer factor, but you can still have swings in pH. So again, watch the nutrient solution that you're adding to your plants. Lastly, flushing plants, so letting some solution drain out of the growing container is advised to help reduce excessive salt accumulation in the root zone. Um, this is called flushing. So this is where you're adding a lot of water, um, and you have holes hopefully in the bottom of your containers. You have a catch basin here so it's not making a mess anywhere, and you can kind of regulate and monitor how much water is actually being flushed uh, through the media that you're using for your plants. So hopefully this helps explain a little bit of nutrient solutions and how they're utilized and what to look for to maximize uh, the efficiency of your grow.